Good morning. It's good to have you guys out. You battled the weather, and here you are, nice and warm and cozy on soft pews. Amen. I tell you what, flannel Sunday, those that have flannel, you got it on, and it does help. So, But it is toasty up here now, isn't it? So, Well, anyway, thank you guys. Uh, those that are watching by uh, internet or however, uh, welcome. We hope you're warm and cozy also, and and your water's not frozen up. So anyway, just keep your uh, faucets dripping. This is Oklahoma winter times, but we're going to we come in to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and he's still on the throne if it's cold or hot, wet, windy, it doesn't matter. Our our God is faithful. So uh, thank you guys for coming out today. Don't have many announcements, just uh, there'll be no services tonight. They'll be canceled tonight. But we will uh, have services Wednesday, uh, 6 o'clock, or 7 o'clock, sorry, 6.30 prayer room. And uh, so come out with that and uh, bring your kiddos so they can be fed. And, and again, uh, we're just here to serve the Lord. And I hope God's been blessing you this week. It's good to see Claire and George back in the house and Greg and uh, battling sicknesses. But we still have those that are out, so be in prayer for those and also remember our homeless that are, you know, that they have shelter and uh, staying warm. Uh, I do want to bring up, there was two Navy SEALs that uh, were lost at sea. So remember, I pray that they find them, but pray for their families. So uh, we are, uh, our servicemen do put it out there for our, our, our safety. So uh, we want to thank all of our military members. So. Uh, so anyway, we'll go ahead and uh, get started. We want to recognize Randall. He's got a lot of events coming up, so we just want to love on him and appreciate him as a pastor. I ain't going to embarrass him much. I know he doesn't like it, but we love him. <laughs> look look at that. Everybody else is ready to throw him under the bus. But I, I don't know. He would us. Uh yeah, but he does have an anniversary and a birthday coming up, so we just want to wish him both happy. So, uh, anyway, with that, let's just go ahead and open up with prayer. Let's just get this started off right. Father, we just give you thanks, Lord. Father, it may be cold outside, Father, Lord, but we're in here to glorify your name. Father, those that are watching, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you just pour out your spirit to wherever they're at, Lord. Lord, feed them, Lord, fuel their flame, Lord, to keep them warm. And, Father, I just pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit will give them, Lord, the gifts, Father, Lord, that we can walk in the fruits of the Spirit, Lord, the love, the joy, the peace, Father, the long-suffering. Father, help us, Lord, to glorify you, Lord. And, uh, Father, help us be able to reach the lost, Lord. I'm praying, Lord, for uh, Lord, uh, our loved ones, Lord, that are, are not uh, as close as they need to be to you, Lord. I pray, Lord, that they just turn their hearts to you, Father. And, Lord, all those, Lord, that are walking uh, the opposite direction, Father, Lord, taking the, the broad path, Father God, Lord, help them, Lord, guide them back, and, and Lord, help us, Lord, be ministers of your word. Father, I lift up the homeless, Lord, today, I, I just pray for safety and, and shelter, Lord, uh, in this cold weather. Father, I pray for these uh, uh, Navy SEALs, Father God, Lord, that whatever happened, Father, Lord, that you can receive the glory and comfort their families, Father. And, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for men and women, Father, Lord, that help protect our country. Lord, I pray for Israel, Lord, that you just strengthen them. And, Lord, I just pray for the Jews that don't know you, Lord, that they will see uh, Jesus as their Savior, Lord, Father, the only way, the truth and the the life, Father God, and, and help us, Lord, as a church continue to grow. Father, Lord, we're not here, Lord, just for ourselves, Father, Lord, we are here to glorify your name. Father, touch our praise and worship team, our pastors, Father God, Lord, our staff, and uh, help us, Lord, grow in you. Father, we're just going to praise you, Lord, in spirit and truth today. Father, Lord, have your way in this place, in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, welcome, y'all. So, praise God. So, I uh, God is faithful and God is good. And we got some more straggling in. Brave the weather. So thank you guys for coming out. Uh, Keth, Jerry, wasn't a whole lot of announcements. Just uh, church is canceled tonight. And then uh, we'll start off Wednesday morning. Or Wednesday morning. Wow. I tell you what, it gets better and better in my mind. Wednesday, 530 prayer room. and then Or 630 prayer room at 7. 
So if you guys ain't confused yet, just hang on, and I'll have you guys so thoroughly confused. But, well, I tell you what, I love the Lord. He loves me, but I tell you what, where my mind goes sometimes, I don't know. So let's go ahead, and we'll take up an offering and uh, tithes and offering, give back to the Lord. And uh, thank you guys for coming out. We're just going to worship the Lord today and just enjoy Him. The heat is working in here, and you guys are warm and cozy. So uh, let's just keep it that way and uh, just trust the Lord that he'll, he'll have His way today. Justin, you want to pray for this? Amen. Thank you, sir. Amen. Oh, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. Oh, I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Well, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. And I will rejoice for all. Somebody rejoice in the Lord this morning. Oh, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. Oh, I will say this is the day that my Lord has made. And I will rejoice for thee. Hallelujah. I feel the presence of the Lord this morning. Well, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. And I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. And I will rejoice for he. All the singing one more time this morning. Oh, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. Oh, I will say this is the day that my Lord has made. And I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Well, he has made me glad. Made me glad, and I will rejoice for He has made me glad. Oh, He has made me glad. He has made me glad, and I will rejoice for He has made me glad. Hallelujah! Has He made you glad this morning? Oh, Hallelujah! I was coming to church this morning, and I I looked at the temperature gauge, just not out of uh, not out of uh, just by looking at it. But you know what temperature it was when I came to church this morning? Three. And I said, thank you, Lord. That's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I said, it's the Trinity weather this morning. Amen. So we're just feeling the presence of the Lord this morning. Let's sing, oh, I want to see him. Amen. Amen. As I journey through the land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, to the crimson flow, many arrows pierce my soul from without within, but my Lord leads me on, and through him I must win, and oh, I want to see him look upon his face. And there to sing forever of his saving grace. And on the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Put the cares all past and a home at last and I ever to rejoice. Well, now when it's service for my Lord, dark may be the night. But I'll cling more close to him, he will give me life. Satan's snares may vex my soul, turn my thoughts aside. But my Lord goes ahead, leads forever be tied. And oh, I want to see him look upon his face. And there to sing forever of his saving grace. And on the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Well, it's a cares all past and a home at last. To rejoice, oh, when in valleys low I look for the mountain high, and behold. 
Behold my Savior there, lady of the fire, with a tender hand outstretched toward the valley low. Oh, guiding me, and I can see as I onward go. And oh, I want to see him look upon his face, and there to sing forever of his saving grace. And on the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. We'll let the cares all pass and a whole man life ever to rejoice. So when before me billows rise from the mighty deep, then my Lord directs my bark and he does safely keep. And he leads me gently home through this world below. Oh, he's a real friend to me. Oh, I love him so. And oh, I want to see him look upon his face and there to sing forever of his saving grace. And on the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Well, it's the cares all past and a home at last, ever to rejoice. And oh, I want to see him look upon his face and there to sing forever of his saving grace. And on the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Well, it's the cares all past and a home at last, ever to rejoice. Hallelujah. Woo, come on, ladies, sing for me this morning. Amen. Worship the Lord today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I heard an old, old story. Oh, victory in Jesus. 
Somebody rejoice this morning. Celebrate the goodness of God. How many of you got victory? Victory in Jesus this morning. Amen. Let's sing a little chorus called God in Your Rivers today. <clears throat> God in your rivers, you think uncrossable. God in your mountains, you can't Specializes in things thought impossible, and he will do what no other power can do. Let's sing it again this morning. Got any rivers you think? We will 
Let me know you got that victory power this morning. That no weapon formed against you is going to prosper this morning. Because for he is Lord. He is Lord. And he has risen from. worship you this morning. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day. Lord, this wonderful day that you have created, Lord, just for us. Father, we recognize your Lordship. Lord, we give you all the praise and all the glory because you are worthy, Lord. You are worthy of all of our praise. You are worthy of all of our adoration this morning. Father, we enter your courts today. Lord, we enter, Lord, this holy ground because where your presence is, Lord, it's holy. Lord, Father, we thank you right now for your mighty presence. Lord, your healing virtues is being released as your mercies and your grace is being extended right now. Lord, we come to honor you and reverence your holy, holy name. Lord, we thank you, Father, for your goodness this morning. Thank you, Jesus, and thank you, Holy Spirit, Lord, for your mighty presence. We ask it all in the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. Give the Lord a good hand clap of praise this morning as we worship the Lord today. Amen. <clears throat> Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here this morning. My, you're faithful to the house of the Lord today, and God is good. I believe you're going to be blessed this morning. Amen. Somebody stand and testify real quick while I get my, while I get my sword out today. Amen. Brother Richie, Richard, stand and testify for me, brother. John, good to have you this morning.
so thankful with this whole week of prayer was amazing. I don't know if you all were able to watch it, but we watched them every single night. Well, not every single night, but we watched. If we didn't watch them one night, we caught up the next night. We we binge watched <laughs> prayer prayer videos. But on um, Saturday morning was talking about renewal and revival and where how it has to start with us and if we the the prayer thing has to begin in the church. And I think there's a core group of people who need to be in the altar on um, Sunday nights at 5.30 every single night. There's a core group that need to be here. And if we will do that, we will see this church change. We will see these seats filled. We will see salvation. We will see baptisms in the Holy Spirit. We will see the evidence of speaking in tongues and the interpretation as it's ordered in God's word. And um, I just, I just feel the the unction and the compu compulsion to uh, in, encourage you guys to be here for prayer time at 5:30. You know, um, we didn't. I don't know if y'all had. Did you have videos where you just came every night and watched videos? Or? We we watched them in our house, and I put them on the the Yale Assembly Family Facebook page, so you lot y'all can find them. But um, <clears throat> I don't. I it's just. It was powerful, all of them, but the, I, I think they did what they usually say, and they say what they were like. She was, she was pretty awesome to talk or to listen to, but she was just flowing, and God is good. And I thank the Lord for being able to have a home where everyone's on board with sitting down and watching things on TV and allowing the Lord to move in our home. Thank you, Sister Cass. Amen. Welcome this morning. Welcome to the house of hope today. God is good and God is faithful. Thank you, singers, musicians, this morning. Lord bless you guys. Thank y'all. If you got your, if you got your Bibles this morning, turn with me to the book of Hebrews, <clears throat> the book of Hebrews, the eleventh chapter. Hebrews chapter eleven. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Lord woke me up about four a.m. This week, and this, and he asked me a question, just straight. I mean, just wake you straight up, and then ask you a question. How are you supposed to answer that? <laughs> he gets right down to business, you know. He just uh, don't lollygag. He just hits it head on, and he woke me up. I mean, just I was wide awake, and he asked me this question. He said, "What are you expecting?" I'm asking you that question this morning as well. What are you expecting? And I thought, and I thought that. I said, Lord, you know what I'm expecting. You know what I'm believing for. You know what I've asked you for. You know what I'm seeking for. And so I began to stir in my heart this morning, and I knew right at that moment that this was the message I was supposed to bring this morning. It was the message I was uh, to, to deliver, to encourage, and to incite and excite this morning. And Hebrews 11 and 6 says, But without faith... It is impossible to please him. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is God. We must believe that he is God. Watch this. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Right there, it stirred in my heart this morning. I said, thank God, because it, 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 this verse 6 right here, it's about our faith, but it's about the possibilities with God. With God, all things are possible. We're going to believe that. We're going to trust him this morning. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you. Lord, I just thank you today for the Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you for the word of God. Lord, let this message go forth, Lord, and not return void. I pray, Holy Spirit, water this seed today, Lord, Father, that you would anoint it. Lord, that you would bless it right now. Lord, I pray that you will touch every heart, every life, every mind right now. Lord, that we bind the spirit of doubt. Lord, 
we take authority over unbelief today, Lord, but we release and we grow our faith right now. We extend them. We extend our faith right now. Father, we thank you for what you're going to do in this house today, what you're going to do the lives of our media church that's watching. Father, I pray the Spirit of God that you would bring a fresh manifestation, Lord, of what people are expecting and what they're believing for. Lord, we love you and we desire you for it in Jesus' wonderful name. And everybody said amen. When you look over here, well, well, let's just say, what, what, is, what is the word expect? expectation what is the definition this morning now if you hear the word expecting it's very simple it means pregnancy you'll not find any other definition other than if you're expecting that means you're pregnant but the word expectant means to have it means to have a, a sense of awaiting it means to have a spirit of hopefulness it means to be prepared prepared and if you're anticipating you're preparing for something amen and he said it also means to be eager i'm eagerly anticipating i'm eagerly eagerly awaiting and it also means i am watchful i'm watching for something that i've been believing for to come to pass amen and also means to have a spirit of revealing revealing how many wants to see that what you've been believing for is going to come to reveal amen it means to have a, 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 a containing. It also means to be anticipating. Have you been asking God, have you been seeking God, that you've been anticipating some events to take place? Amen. I'm expecting God. I'm, ex I'm looking to, to some things that I've been praying for to come to pass. Amen. And so I couldn't, I, when God began to speak this in my spirit, I said, I know this is the right time. It couldn't be coming a better time because we've been in prayer all week long. We've been seeking God's face. We've been desiring God to move. And God is answering us this morning. What you've been asking for, what you've been believing for is about to happen. Hallelujah. I can't help but thank and believe to trust in my God that as you, as you are an expectant believer this morning in a God who never fails, you're expecting in a believer this morning a God that you can trust. You believe in a God who is truthful, who is honest with you. He's a God of integrity. And if God promised you, you can guarantee it's going to come to pass. We believe this morning, God, that he is faithful. Amen. He's, a, he's that ever-flowing fountain in our life. So what is, what is the biblical hope this morning? The biblical hope is our, expe our, our expectation should rest in God our expectation rest in God doesn't rest in conditions it doesn't rest in circumstances it doesn't rest in people and it doesn't rest in things it rests in the God who is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him amen who earnestly my Lord who's earnestly desire he said without faith it is impossible to please him, but if you got faith, you serve an impossible God who's able to do the impossible. Amen. We serve the mightiness of God. If you look in, if you look in the tenth chapter, Hebrews ten and verse twenty-three. Hebrews ten and twenty-three. It says, "Let us hold fast." Hold fast to the promise of God. Hold fast to what you've been believing for. Hold on to the promise of God. Hold fast to the profession of your faith without wavering. Watch it. For he is faithful that promised it. Hallelujah. Can I get an amen this morning? I said he is faithful that promised it. If he promised it to you, you can guarantee it's going to happen. Amen. Whoo, my Lord. Through revelation, vision, this morning, we, 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 we comprehend the, the goodness of God. He said, so verse 22 or 24, let us consider one another to provoke, to stir up unto love, and to stir up and to provoke unto good works. That's what we do this morning. We're provoking you. I want to provoke you this morning. <laughs> I want to provoke you to good works. I want to provoke you to, to loving people this morning. Verse 25, watch it. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the man of some is, watch it. But, it, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. 
I, don't, don't feel bad because you're not here this morning. That's not what this verse is about. But what the verse is about is the last line. As you see the day approaching. Church, I want to remind you this morning that I'm anticipating the return of my Savior. I'm anticipating the return of the Messiah. I'm anticipating the King of all kings to come. Amen. I've got an anticipation that I'm going to see those eastern skies split open. Hallelujah. I mean, oh, hallelujah. I wish the church could get excited about the coming of Jesus. Why? Because as we see his coming, we're anticipating closer and closer. The more we're provoked to doing good works, the more we're being provoked to loving one another. The more we're believing God and trusting God. If you go to Luke, the third chapter, Luke, the third chapter, watch this. Luke, the third chapter, verse 15. Luke 3 and 15. Look at what it says. He says, and as the people were in eager expectation, as the people were in a state of anticipation, in a state of expecting, these people were expecting the Messiah to come. They were anticipating, they heard about, they read about the scriptures, it was promised by the major prophets, by the minor prophets. The people were in a state of of expectation hallelujah church are you in that state this morning are you in that state to where i've been praying i've been seeking god i've been believing god i released my faith and i'm expecting they was expecting god to show up they was expecting the word of god what it's been promised was about to happen and it says the people were in a state of expectation and all the men Mused or reasoned in their hearts of John whether he were the Christ or not. They were so excited, they were so anticipating, they were looking. Are you him? Are you the one we've been looking for? John, could, could John be the one? We see his good works. We know he's an anointed preacher. We see him baptizing people. We see John doing some amazing things. John, could this be the one we're looking for? John said, John said, he said, uh, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water. Oh, but there's one mightier than I cometh. (laughs) Sure, don't set your expectations too low. Don't set your expectations. Don't set what you believe. Don't settle for less here. This is a good point right here. They was, well, this could be him. No, I'm not looking a could be. I'm looking for the one who is. I'm looking for the one who's mightier. I'm looking for the one who is able, he said, to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Church, what I'm anticipating is far greater than what things or people or pleasures can bring to me. I'm anticipating a mightier than John the Baptist to come into my life and to say, me to deliver me and to heal me and to me to supply all of my needs I'm looking for that my Lord my Lord he says he said the one who is able whose fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his floor and he will gather the wheat into his garner he said for the but the chafe he will burn with fire with unquenchable and uh, many other things in his exhortation preached he unto the people but the people we're anticipating the coming of the Messiah. And that's what Paul was telling us over in the book of Hebrews. He said, we need to look forward to the promise of his coming. Amen. We need to be ready, be anticipating, be anticipating for his coming. If you look in Matthew real close, this is where this close. Go to Matthew 9 and 27. Matthew 9 and 27. Look at what he says. Matthew 9 and 27. Talking about releasing your faith. Matthew 9 and 27. He said, And when these departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said unto him, Believe ye that I am able to do this? And they say, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, you're able. Then touched he their eyes. He said, and be it according to your faith. Be it unto you. Hallelujah. Church, we need to release our faith this morning because he said, according to your faith, according to my faith, be it unto you. 
How many, what are you expecting for? What are you believing for this morning? What are you anticipating to happen? Don't get quiet on me in this third Baptist church this morning. What are you anticipating God to do in your life? What are you anticipating or expecting God to do through your life this morning? Amen. That God can, 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 can provoke us uh, to greater things this morning, to enable us this morning. And he said, but be it according to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were opened. They followed him expecting, my Lord, my Lord. Be it according to your faith. Go to Acts. Go to Acts. Acts the third chapter, what's this one? Acts the third chapter. We see the lame man at the gate beautiful. Acts the third chapter. He says, he said, and verse 2, he said, and a, certain, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they had laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, when, who seeing Peter and John about to go in the temple, ask alms, said, Peter fastened his eyes upon him and, and John, and he said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting, expecting to receive something of them. He expected to receive something from them. He said, it's just another day. It's another day just like any other day before. I'm going to go lay before the gate, and he's going to ask for alms. The same old, same old routine every day, every day, every day. I'm going to get my two nickels today. I'm going to get my two nickels tomorrow just like I got them yesterday. He had no greater, he said, just expecting to receive something. If I'm expecting, I'm looking for something specific. Hello. I'm not going to throw a shotgun prayer out there when I say, Lord, I need something specific. He was just expecting to receive something. Well, whatever comes my way, whatever, somebody, I, I, I serve a big God who is all about order. I serve a God who's not confused, but I serve a God of order, and he knows exactly what I need, and we need to be specific about what we're asking God for and say, God, I am believing this, and I'm believing for this, and I'm believing for this, and I'm believing for this, because I don't want just something. I want what God has for me. Amen. I want his perfect gift. He, got, he said the, the perfect gifts come from the Father of lights. God has something strategic. God has something special and unique for the expectant believer this morning. And he said he's expecting something from them. Well, church, I don't know about you, but what I ask for, you can't supply. What I'm expecting... You can't provide it for me. Because there's something far greater, something far bigger, because I don't know about you, but I serve a big God who is able to do the exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I could ask or think according to the power that worketh in me tonight. Hallelujah. I serve a big God who is able. I serve a big God. He is anything too hard for the Lord. Honey, let me tell you, I serve a powerful, mighty God who is able, the creator of heavens and earth, and, and I believe he can supply and provide my request. Hallelujah. I'm not looking for something. I'm looking for him. Amen. My Lord. Who else can put a coin in a fish's mouth? Who else can walk on the water? My God is able. And he said, verse 6, Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Woo, hallelujah! Woo, he was looking for something, but he got something far greater, didn't he? I don't think he was expecting legs that day. I don't think he was expecting to walk that day. But there were people who were men of God that showed the church we got to be that people of God that God can use us as a vessel. He said, I'm going to provoke you. I'm going to provoke you to good work. My Lord. God wants to use you as his vessel. God wants to use you as, as the instrument of the world to supply and meet the needs of the people. My Lord, too old and fat for this, Justin. God is able. God is able. Go to Mark 10. Go to Mark 10. 
Hallelujah. Go to Mark 10, verse 46. Mark 10 and 46. Mark 10 and verse 46. He says, And they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. Folks, that's a sad state to be in. I see it. I see it on the sides of the road. If you go to the Tulsa, the Sand Springs area, you see people sitting on the side of the road still begging today. This is still an issue. This is still a problem that we have today. Some by choice, some not by choice. And I thought about them years. I saw them years. They were huddled up in blankets and stuff. And I, I said, Lord, them dear souls, how are they going to make it through these cold temperatures? Lord, bless them. Lord, bless them. Thank God for John 3, 16 and the Iron Gate in Tulsa. Amen. And it, 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 what he said. He said he sat by the highway side begging. That was his daily routine. That was his life. Just begging. Just begging. Begging whatever he could get. But verse 47. And when he heard that Jesus, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out. <laughs> Do you think he sensed a little bit of hope right there? Do you think that he said something is about to transpire? Because he said he began to cry out. You see a change in this man's mind. You see a change in his a tone in his voice here. And he said he began to cry out and he began to say, Jesus! He got specific, didn't he? He didn't call for Peter, James, or John, or Andrew, or Philip here. He began to cry out, because he had heard something about what Jesus had done in the past, of how other people had got their healing or their deliverance. He began to cry to the specific one, and he said he began to cry out to Jesus. He said, Thou Son of David... He recognized his position. He recognized his authority. He recognized his sovereignty. He recognized his power. He said, have mercy on me. He got specific, didn't he? He got specific with God, and he was anticipating something to happen. Like this. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. Now, now, you just need to calm down over there. You need to calm down. You need to get quiet. Boy, that didn't sit well with him, though, did it? <laughs> Ooh, don't you tell me to sit down and be quiet. You don't know what Jesus has done for me. You don't know how he's healed me. You don't know how he delivered me. Amen. He said, he said, but he began to cry out the more and more. I believe he got a little bit louder and a little bit louder. I believe he started some commotion. He was provoked, wasn't he? He was provoked at my Lord. And he began to cry a great deal. He said, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Watch this right here. He said, and Jesus stood still. Folks, when we, but when we get specific with God and we get earnest with God and we start releasing faith, it'll cause Jesus to stand still and pay attention to what we are petitioning him for and what we are requesting from him. Jesus stood still. He stopped. He heard someone who was diligently, he heard someone who was earnestly seeking him and crying out to his name. And he said, and he commanded him to be called. Oh, my Lord. Jesus, he got Jesus' attention. He didn't call the one and said, now you need to calm down, blind Bartimaeus. He didn't call them, did he? He said, just get out of the way. He said, there's one over here. That's expecting. There's one over here that's anticipating. Bring him to my Lord. Woo! Church, we must be expectant believers this morning. Expectant believers. He said, and Jesus stood still and commanded. I believe he told them, hey, hey, you guys go get him and bring him to me. <laughs> Woo! I can't prove that. But my spirit man says, vengeance is mine, thus saith the Lord. <laughs> Just go get him and you bring him to me. Watch this. 
And they call the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, be of good cheer. Rise, because he calleth thee. Church, I believe he's calling your name this morning. I said, I believe he's calling your name. Now, verse 50, verse 50 is the verse. Verse 50 is the verse. And blind Bartimaeus, casting away his garment. I didn't know this. I studied it out, researched it, and I found this. In that culture, in that day, that the government would give them clothes to wear. Anyone that was a beggar, and I thought, to distinguish them that they were separate from everybody else. And I thought, that's unique because we do the same thing. They, we, we put handicap stickers in our car to identify us that allows us to have a place to park. And if you look in Tulsa now, they make all the panhandlers wear the, the vest. I thought, they're, and I thought, this is so true. So in the Eastern culture, the government literally gave them clothes to wear to identify that they were beggars and they could be there on the street corner to legally ask. But notice what he said. He said, I've been identified as a beggar no more. Today, I'm casting off my garment. Today, he said, I know that somewhere, somehow, even Jesus is in the close vicinity. And if he's anywhere near me, I'm about to receive my healing. I'm about to receive my deliverance because I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to take off my garment that says I'm a beggar because I'm not going to be a beggar any longer because I've come to the intense point where I've been anticipating my healing, my deliverance. And the one who is able to do it for me is here in my midst. Amen. Woo, he said, what he was saying was, I'm not going back to the life of a beggar anymore. Hallelujah. He said, I'm free. I am free. I, he said, I'm casting off the stench. I'm casting off the nature. I'm casting off what says I am a beggar. I'm not a beggar anymore, but I am free. Who the Son has set free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Church, that's what the power, that's the power of anticipation. That's the power of expectation at work in a person's life. You've got to cast off that old baggage. Cast off what identifies you as a past beggar. My Lord. Isn't that Holy Ghost good? He said, I'm casting it off. I'm not going to act like it. I'm not going to look like it anymore. So notice this. So all this, I've done all this to say a point this morning. The devil is not concerned with what you used to be he's not concerned about what you are satan is quite content with having you as a church who is still blind who is still crippled and who is still dry and never expecting things to change satan is very content with that he's just content with you just coming and being that beggar being that lame man because he sees you as no threat he see he does he doesn't see you as someone who's going to uh, stir up waves against his kingdom. So really, he sees us as no threat. But I know this. But what scares Satan the most, and what unnerves Satan the most, and what even terrorizes him and his kingdom is believing that you as God's people, that God is about to make you and to mold you into another Jesus like him this morning. And it literally scares him to death. Amen. Because he sees you as a terror to his kingdom this morning. My Lord. So there's power and expectation. There is power in believing this morning that God can change and rearrange your life today. If you go back to 1 Kings. If you go back to 1 Kings 18 chapter. 1 Kings 18. Hallelujah. 1 Kings 18. When Elijah was on Mount Carmel in verse 41 
1 Kings 19, or 18 and 41 says, And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink. Remember what I told you about the, the anticipation, the definition was? Be prepared. Be prepared. Be ready. Be watchful. Be eager. Be awaiting. He said, I want you to get up. I want you to eat. I want you to drink. I want you to start watching. Because he said, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. Woo, my Lord, church. Elijah said, get ready because I am in expectation. I am anticipating. And I begin to hear something in the distance. Oh, hallelujah, church. Are you hearing something in the distance, church? Are you hearing something in the distance that says he has commanded? He's calling for you. He's calling for you. Watch what he says. He said, and Ahab went up to eat, and he went to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth, and he put his face between his knees. God is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. Glory be to God. And he said to his servant, go up now and look toward the sea. And he went up and he looked and he said, he said, there is nothing. Well, I knew it wasn't going to happen. The preacher got up Sunday morning and just preached his heart out. But I knew it wasn't going to happen. I went home and I opened my window. And I prayed, and Lord, that nothing happened. You got to watch that spirit of doubt. You got to watch that spirit of unbelief. Because long as you're dry crippled, lame. Satan says, you're no threat to me. But that's not what the case was. He said, I went up, I didn't see nothing. Well, nothing's going to change me. I've been begging here, I've been blind here all day long. Nothing's going to change. You got to watch that spirit. You got to watch that spirit. And what he says, he says, he, but he said, go up again seven times. Somebody said, that's the number of, of completion and the number of perfection. I believe what concerns me concerns God, and God is about to perfect that in my life. I believe God is about to perfect some things in my life and perfect some things in your life this morning. He said he went up again seven times. Church, you just keep on praying. You keep on believing. You keep asking, and you keep seeking, and you keep knocking because God will answer you. Hallelujah. You be diligent. You be earnest. He said, he said and I saw nothing. He said, but go up seven times, and it came to pass, and it came to pass, and it came to pass. Hallelujah. At the seventh time that he said, behold, there arise just a little cloud of the sea like, the, like a man's hand and he said go up and say to Ahab prepare the chariot and get thee down and don't let the rain stop you Hallelujah. he was anticipating and what he was anticipating what he was believing for it happened hallelujah it may take you praying seven times though a man falls seven times he's going to get back up amen my lord my lord now watch this look at verse 45 and it came to pass in the meanwhile, remember what I said? The definition is a spirit of awaiting. You've been asking for some things. You've been believing God for some things for years. There's a spirit, a period of awaiting. In the meanwhile, in the meanwhile, God is still making rainbows. In the meanwhile, God is still feeding the sparrows. In the meanwhile, he's getting the ravens prepared. In the meanwhile. <laughs> and we feel like nothing is happening. And God is saying, I got to get the ravens over here. And I got to get the storm clouds over here. And I got to get this over here. And I got to bring this in. God has got a lot going on just to supply your needs this morning, folks. God has got a lot going on so he can bless you abundantly and above this morning. God has got to get some. So in the meanwhile, when you say, well, God, God is working on your behalf. God is at the throne this morning and on the throne praying for you and trusting you that God's going to supply your needs. He says, he said, and it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black and the clouds and the wind, what's this, and there was a
I wish somebody would shout right about there. And there was a great, and there was a great rain. There's a great breakthrough. There's a great healing. There's a great deliverance. There's a great blessing coming. My Lord, my Lord, are you here this morning, church? Are you hearing this old preacher this morning? God asked me, what are you expecting? What are you expecting? Church, we must be believing that God is able to produce a great rain. Amen. It doesn't always have to be a great storm in your life. But there can be a great rain in your life. That God wants to come. That God wants to come and bless you this morning. God has, as an expectant believer this morning, we're going to praise in expectation. Well, here I am again, Lord. It's me again. Lord, stand in need of prayer. It's me again, oh Lord. It's me again, oh Lord. No, a believer of expectation. An expected believer is going to be one when you hit the throne room, you're going to worship in expectation. You're going to say, this is the day the Lord has made. Woo! I'm going to rejoice and I'm going to be glad in it. You're going to come into the throne room with an expected praise about you. You're going to come into the throne room and you're going to believe. You're going to say, Lord, I'm going to sow this morning's offering. I'm going to sow in expectation. Lord, I'm believing that you're going to supply my need, my rent, my bills, my utilities. God, I'm going to sow in expectation this morning. I'm not going to give out a duty. I'm not going to give out an obligation. I'm going to give in expectation. I'm given to receive, to give. Oh, that'll curl a lot of people's hair and toenails right there. Oh, Pat, you're just giving to get money. You better believe I'm giving to get more money. So I can give more away. So I can sow more into the kingdom of God. So when I sow, so when I sow, I'm sowing in expectation. I'm believing. Lord, thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Are you with me this morning, folks? I'm going to praise in expectation. I'm going to sow in expectation. And I'm going to pray in expectation. I'm not going to go through the routine. I'm not going to say, Lord, now lay me down. I'm going to pray with expectation. And I'm going to believe that God's ears are going to be attentive and his hands not going to be shortened to my prayer. I'm believing God. I'm going to walk in expectation. I'm walking to what I'm believing for. I'm going to talk in expectation. I'm going to hope in expectation. And I'm going to trust in expectation this morning. I'm believing. I'm believing. I'm going to expect the outpouring of the newness of the Holy Ghost in every area of my life. And as a pastor, I'm going to believe for the fresh anointing and the fresh outpouring of the Holy Ghost to be poured out upon your life every time. Hallelujah! Woo! My, we got to be believing this morning, church. We're expecting believers today, amen. Living in the power of expectation. Believing that. We're believing the Holy Spirit is going to be poured out because our God is able. So what am I believing? God, today I expect you to move. Every one of these, every one of these that I prayed, every story I read to you, God moved that moment. God may not move in your moment, but I know in the right time because God is no, God, he's the author of time. But in God's perfect timing, in God's perfect timing, he's going to bless you. I want to read. I want to read. Go to Hosea. I'm about to close up here. Hosea. Hosea 12 and 6. Look at what he says. Hosea 12 and 6. Just a little minor prophet tucked away over here. Tucked away. But when I see Hosea, I'm going to say, Hosea, I preached out of your, out of your, out of your book. Where is it at? There, coming on up here. Hosea. Anybody found it yet? I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Hosea. Hosea 12. Hosea 12 and verse 6. Hosea 12 and 6. Therefore, turn thou to thy God. 
Remember the blind man at, or the lame man at Gate Beautiful? He looked to Peter and John. But we got to be looking to God. He said, turn, turn thou to thy God. Number two, keep mercy and keep judgment. Number three, wait on thy God continually. Continually. If you're waiting on God continually, you're not being distracted by everything else besides you. You're focused. You're focused. You've trusted God. You've asked God. You believe in God. You keep walking in expectation. You keep hoping in expectation. You keep trusting in expectation. You keep waiting on God expecting. Wait on God expecting. Go to one more. Go to Proverbs 13. Go to Proverbs 13. These are just some, just, just some little bonus nuggets. Proverbs, Proverbs 13, 12. Proverbs 13, 12. I love this verse. Proverbs 13, 12. Hope, hope deferred maketh the heart sick. But when, but when the desire cometh. How many's got a desire this morning? He says, what, what, what did he say? What did he say in Psalm 37? Hold your spot. You just thought I was done, didn't you? <laughs> Psalm 37. I want you to read it. Matter of fact, matter of fact, matter of fact, you can go to Psalms 34, you can go to Psalms 35, and you can go to Psalm 37 if you want to, and you'll still find your deliverance. All those psalms right in there are so powerful. They were so mighty. But Psalm 37 and verse 3 says, Trust in the Lord, for it says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of thine heart. I've got desires this morning. I've got holy desires. I've got righteous desires this morning. I've got, I've got some personal desires I want to see happen. Amen. He said, If it lines up with the will of God, he will grant it. Amen. According to your faith, according to your faith, he says, he said, he shall give you the desires of your heart. When, 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 when Psalm thirteen twelve says, when the desire cometh, but look at you and say, neighbor, it's coming. Get in agreement with them. Get in agreement with your neighbor right now. Say what you've been believing for, what you've been praying. For, I'm going to agree with you. Woo-wee. See, Satan, he wants to try to deter that. He wants to try to get you to quit believing for it. He wants to get you to a place where you become less expecting and say, well, it ain't going to happen anyway. But he says right here, he said, hope deferred maketh the heart sick. Oh, but when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. Hallelujah. Look at verse 19. The desire. Somebody shout. <laughs> You've been believing for the desire. And when the desire is accomplished. That's enough to make a backslid Lutheran want to shout. When the desire is accomplished, it is sweet to the soul. Well, just go back to Psalm 34. Look at what he said. Go to Psalm 34. Man, this, this is a powerful chapter. Powerful chapter. The poor man, verse 6, the poor man cried. The Lord heard him, saved him out of all of his trouble. The angel of the Lord encamped around about them that fear him, and he delivereth them. O taste of it, the Lord is good, the blessed man that trusts in him. O fear the Lord, ye are saints, because there is no want to them that fear him. Folks, I'm trying to stir your faith this morning. I'm trying to build you up to a place of reassuring, reassuring that God has heard your request. God has heard your prayer, and it's coming. Is coming. He asked me, he said, what are, you, what are you expecting? What are you expecting? Look what he says. He said, the young, lions, <clears throat> the young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. My Lord, church, God wants to bless. God wants to restore. God wants to heal. God wants to renew this morning. You can even tie into verse 35 if you want to. He said in verse 27, he said, let the Lord be magnified which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Somebody shout. Well, the Lord wants me humble and broke and poor all my life. No, he doesn't. God wants you blessed. God wants you spiritually, physically, emotionally blessed this morning. What are you expecting? Well, I'm just trying to get through life. When I get over there, Lord, just build me a cabin in the corner. 
set your things, set your sights on things above and not on things beneath. God said you're the head and not the tail. You shall be above and not beneath. You shall lend and not borrow. Somebody shout this morning, amen. God, he said he rejoices, he rejoices in his pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Hallelujah. God rejoiced at the lame man begin to walk and praise him. He said he began to rejoice. He said the blind barter man cast off that old garment and he began to praise somebody shout this morning God rejoices in the prosperity of his servant today and my tongue shall speak of thy righteousness and of thy expected praise all the day long we know that we know he says my help cometh from the Lord I will look to the mountains from which cometh my help. I will look to the Lord. That's where we come from this morning. That's where our deliverance, our health, and our speaking mouth could tie in so much more this morning. But I'm going to believe God and just trust God that I've sowed some seed. Amen. I've sowed some seed in your life this morning. Oh, hallelujah. I, I, I knew, I knew that when God spoke that into my spirit, it was for this morning. And I said, there is no way that we could even consider canceling church this morning because I know what God put in my spirit. So, so those that's here and those that's watching this morning, whoo, somebody say the answer's on the way. My breakthrough's on the way this morning. My answer's on the way. My healing is on the way. See, I, I'll, I'll share this with you right now in closing. I'm going I'm I'm to let, let you out early this morning. I went to the eye doctor the other day, and I got a crazy eye, just to be honest about it. It's crazy. In, in, in my left eye, I, I've known about it for years, but didn't know what it was. So anyway, I've, I've got my left eye is pretty weak. So if, if you see, like Jesus, if I take my glasses off, all I can see is the top half. I can't see the bottom half the letters. If I see an H, I don't see the bottom legs. If I see an E or F, I don't see the bottom legs if I got my glasses off. And if I do see them, I may see one leg and not the other leg. Or if I do see it, it may be a slanted. So it's kind of a crazy eye. And so up to this point, the doctors always said, well, we're just going to give you a better prescription. They never did nothing about it, never do anything about it whatsoever. They said, we're just going to you know, just kind of pass you through like a herd of cattle. But I had a different doctor this time, and she says, that concerns me, and I'm going to find out what your problem is. She said, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to run a test, and she said, I'm not going to charge you for it. I'm just going to run the test, if you will. And I said, I'm willing. So what happens is, it, I don't know when, why, how, shape, form, fashion, don't know nothing past, but she said, you've got a hole in your macula. She said, you've got a hole in it. And it, part of it's missing, basically. Part of my macular is missing. And so that lets me know that I, I, I can't see. I can't see because I don't have the seeing part to see it with. Right? That makes sense? So I say it this morning. <clears throat> spiritually, many people have got holes in their macular. Yes, they do. And they're not seeing the proper vision that we're not seeing what God wants them to have, what God wants them to become. We can become spiritually blind to what God has. But I know that God is able to heal this hole in my macular just as well as he's able to heal the spiritual blind hole macular in other people's eyes that God can restore that where we can have good vision of who God because he said where there is no vision, the people perish. We're a people of vision. That's what we're a people of expectancy. We're a people who believe in God. We've asked, we believe, we're praying for it, and Lord, we believe it's on the way. I want you to stand with me. Oh, hallelujah. Tell your neighbor this morning, neighbor, I hear the sound. I hear the sound of a great rain. Woo! How many believe that this morning? How many hear the sound this morning? How many hear the sound this morning? The blind Bartimaeus said, Lord, if you're anywhere in the vicinity, I know you're here. Lord, but in expectancy, Lord, I'm going to cast off this garment just knowing I'm not going to go back to the life of that beggar. Woo! 
Lord, I pray let's open the windows of heaven this morning. Lord, let the great rain begin to fall. Lord, let the floods of refreshing this morning begin to overflow. Lord, begin to overflow into our lives this morning. Lord, Father, I pray, Lord, let fresh oil, Lord, begin to be poured out upon your people. Father, I pray, Lord, and oh, that thou would bless me indeed this morning, Lord. Father, that you would bless this congregation today, Lord. Father, that you would strengthen them. Lord, I pray that you will take pleasure, Lord, in the prosperity, Lord, of your people today, Lord. Father, I pray the King of glory, Lord, would come in a mighty force this morning. Lord, that you would equip, Lord, that you would prepare these vessels, Lord, and we would rise up in faith. Lord, let our faith arise and believe, Lord, for we're going to hope this morning in what seemed to be impossible, but God, with you, we know that all things are possible. Lord, there's nothing too hard for you today, Lord. Father, I'm praying right now, Lord, that you would, that they delight in you, Lord, that you would grant them the desires, Lord, of their heart today, Lord. Father, we come believing, we come expecting right now. Father, we admire, Lord, somebody begin to praise him right now in that expectation. Begin to praise him and expect, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Begin to praise him in hope. Begin to praise him in hope. This is what I'm expecting in hope. I'm expecting in God's truth that what he has promised, he's also able to perform. I'm believing and I'm trusting God right now. I'm lining up. I'm aligning up my prayer life. I'm aligning up my will with God's promises. I'm lining up my will. I'm lining up my right now with God's promises. Church, line yourself. Align yourself with God's promises right now. Lay out, lay out your request. Lay them out before God right now. What you been, what are you expecting God for? What are you believing God for? What are you trusting God for? Lay out your request right now. Number two, you got to trust God's timing. Trust God's timing this morning, and you've got to wait in expectancy. Wait in faith right now, believing right now. And my Lord, my Lord, I feel the Holy Spirit. I feel the whoo shatalabo riki sadaka. Hallelujah. It is no secret what God can do, what He's done for others, He'll do for you. And with arms wide open, he'll pardon you, for it is no secret what God can do. How many believe God can do it this morning? Hey, if you need prayer, come on down right now. I want to pray. Lord, I want to pray with you this morning. I want to pray with you this morning. I want to get all tangled up in your faith. I want to, my Lord, I want to get heaven involved with your desires right now. Come on, church. Let's line up across the front. Let's believe God. Let's believe God and trust God. Keith, you said, Lord, I want to see people healed. I want to see people. Come on, Keith, get in the prayer line and let's believe God and let's trust God this morning. He's more than enough. I said, we serve a God who is bigger and greater and far than any other. He said, I have no rivals. I have no equals. There is none beside me this morning. Amen. Let's believe God. Let's believe God and trust God. Can I have some praise music back there this morning as we begin to praise God? We're going to praise in expectation, my husband. Somebody start praying in faith right now. Just start praying in. Lay out your request. Lay out your request before the, my Lord, come boldly, come boldly, come boldly, come boldly, come boldly into the throne room of grace right now. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Father, we're expecting, uh, Lord, whoo, hallelujah, holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty. Lord, I'm believing and I'm trusting with all these saints. Lord, you said we're two or three are gathered in my 